हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन द रियल एनालिसिस क्वेश्चन टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट ऑल दोज क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू द पार्ट सी विच वॉज आस्क इन द एग्जामिनेशन जून ट्वेंटी नाइन इज रिमेंबर दैट वी डिस्कस ऑल क्वेश्चन विद द हेल्प ऑफ द शॉर्टकट ट्रिक्स दैट इज विद द हेल्प ऑफ द विद इन वन टू टू मिनट्स टाइम पीरियड लेट स्टार्ट विद दिस वन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू वॉच द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स ऑफ दिस माई शॉर्टकट ट्रिक्स ऑफ द पार्ट बी एंड अदर्स आर देर यू कैन सिंपली फॉलो दिस चैनल नेम डॉक्टर हरीश कर वेर यू कैन फाइंड द वेरियस वीडियोज रिलेटेड टू दिस शॉर्टकट मैथड्स रिलेटेड टू द सी एस एन एट एग्जामिनेशन सो लेट स्टार्ट विद दिस पार्ट सी नाउ इज द पार्ट सी सो इट डेफिनेटली हैज मोर देन वन करेक्ट आंसर आर देर सो वट इज गिवन टू यू यू हैव द सीक्वेंस ऑफ द पॉजिटिव वीरियल नंबर सच दैट के इज नथिंग बट माई लिमिट ऑफ दिस सुप्रीम एज एन अप्रोच इज इन्फिनिटी ऑफ हेयर देन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग सीरीज इज माई कन्वर्जेंट 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 एंड फॉर so that's a very simple about that so we what you can do if you remember that what is that this is nothing but look like say ratio test or root test fine so since it is a one raised to power n so it will be my root test so once it's a root test which things come in your mind when you think about the convergent that is my nothing but the radius of convergent okay so how you can find the radius of convergent from here so we all knows that radius of convergence from here is nothing but my this part this is the definition of the radius of convergent now what is the short what is the shortcut tricks for you so you, you can simply remember that whenever r is my zero then the series an is not convergent however when this is infinity then the series is convergent for every so look at that for the word is important is for every so that's a simple shortcut tricks for you okay so look about that so when k is infinity so this is my k so this expression is nothing but my so you can see r is nothing but 1 by k now look about that when k is infinity r is 0 so when r is 0 it is not convergent so but here is a convergence so first option is cancel out k is infinity k infinity r is my 0 so it is not convergent so we are looking about the two statement so it is not true so that is a correct statement if k is zero when k is zero so r becomes infinity so r is infinity it means it's a convergent so when k is zero it means r infinity so it is a convergent that's a correct statement when k is zero when k is zero r is infinity so it's a convergent but they are talking about the not convergent so that option is cancel out so look about that a very shortcut tricks about this a very answer out so 2 and 3 are the correct answers remember always try to solve the problem with the help of shortcut tricks look about the another are this again this part c so more than one correct answers are there now we will look about the again shortcut tricks so what is given to you so it is my here cos of t divided by x square plus of t square now you have to think whether it's a bounded continuous well defined or not so clearly says that x is my what is the x uh, t is my from 1 to infinity so clearly says that this number can never be zero once it can never be zero it means what is the meaning of that it is well defined once is a well defined cos of t is always be a well defined function so it means the ratio of the two is a well defined function so once is a well defined so it is this option is my cancel now you have to think about the continuous or not so this is a polynomial so if it is a non zero it means this is my well defined and this is the polynomial so this is the polynomial is my continuous function also the cos of t is my continuous function so the product of this function is my continuous so the first option is my continuous is correct this option is cancel out how you check the bounded so you can simply take the modulus of this so what is the modulus of integration this is less than equal to integration of the modulus so what is the integration of the cos t upon x square plus t square cos of t is less than always one so this is nothing but x square plus of t square over 1 to infinity so what is the integration of this this nothing but my tan inverse t by x so over the limits 1 to infinity so what is that 1 by x so when infinity is a pi by 2 when it's a tan inverse 1 by 1 by x so you can see this is my finite answer so what is the meaning of that mode of the function is less than mode of the function is less than of the finite answer mode of the x is less than of the 
finite answer what is the meaning of that it means it is a bounded so once is a bounded so the correct answer is 1 and the 2 mark that's a simple shortcut fix about look about the another are there so again which of the following is my true statement about so whether the sequence is there so when the sequence will be convergent so remember that sequence is convergent when you have to take on the limit and if it goes to the finite once is a finite then the sequence is convergent so look about that if yn is convergent so yn is my xn upon 1 plus x so you have to define the yn in such a way it goes to the finite number so that's a very simple if i consider xn to be the sequence n so it will be n upon 1 plus n what is the limit as n approaches infinity it goes to the 1 which is a finite it means yn is my convergent if yn is convergent xn is also convergent but you can see this is a this is a divergent series because it's unbounded way. so it means the first option is wrong if xn is convergent so look about the you have to think about the sequence xn is convergent so i can simply take one by n square as it goes to the zero uh, and by using the p test and so on it's a it's a convergent everybody knows that one by n scale is convergent what is the yn is if you consider about the yn is one by n square one plus one by n square so what is that this is nothing but here so which goes to the zero that's a finite are there so it means this is a convergent xn is convergent yn is also convergent so the right answer is my b is there if xn is bounded yn is also bounded what is the meaning of the bounded that means you have to think which uh, a sequence should be less than of this here so that's the meaning of this so you have to think xn is bounded so what is the sequence i can consider one by n is a sequence which is bounded between the zero and one okay so it means xn is my bounded so what is the yn if you consider xn is 1 by n so it will be 1 plus 1 by n so that is 1 upon n plus 1 clearly says that 1 upon n plus 1 is lies between 0 to 1 that means xn is bounded yn is also bounded so that option is also correct while converse is true that is not true why because if you consider this series yn is say n upon 1 plus n clearly says that this is a bounded it can be written as 1 here it is a bounded R. this is less than one but what is the xn in this case xn is nothing but my n which is a unbounded sequence it means yn is bounded that's true but xn is bounded that's not true so this is strong so the correct answer of this problem is my two and three so just think about the reverse are there finite and their thing are look about the another are there which of the following is the bounded variation that's a very simple about that i can tell you the shortcut tricks you, sh you should remember that always be. so any of the function which is of the form x alpha sine 1 upon x raised to power beta and 0 whenever x is here so uh, whenever this or you can consider this one is x alpha or even as a cos of this one Remember, always remember these are there okay and zero elsewhere if either the cos or sine then a function is said to be a bounded variation whenever alpha is my greater than beta remember this shortcut trick that's a very useful for you when you are trying to solve the bounded variation problem so look about that. a function f and g what is the alpha is one beta is one so is alpha is greater than beta no it means f is not bounded variations oh, sorry which of the following is true which of the following is my true so this is my correct statement this is my wrong statement now look about the g what is the g is x into fx so fx is my here so it will be x here sine of 1 by x and 0 so now clearly says that alpha is my 2 beta is my 1 so alpha is greater than beta satisfied it means g is my bounded variation so what is the right answer 2 and 3 so remember this is the shortcut fix that i tell you that will help you a lot in your examinations so this is all about the part c question which is related to the real analysis question that was asked in the examinations i hope you can simply learn this video you can share this with your friends and you may watch my previous lectures on the playlist csr net all about the shortcut tricks related to the probability quotient calculus of variation complex analysis as well as the sequence series real analysis of the 2020 years in a product and many more you can find the playlist csr net
channel name Dr. Harish Garks and here. I hope you can simply like, share and comment this video with your friends. Best of luck students. Happy learning.